I really, really enjoy working in the Southwest and working in the White Sands area in particular has been quite a remarkable experience for a variety of reasons. Just traveling out there, it's a beautiful area. Crossing the dunes to me always remind me of a, a sea of whipped cream and uh, particularly in the mornings, the, you can see the mountains off to the, to the west lit up by the morning sun and the, the white dunes. It's a real, it's a pleasure, it's quite a, uh, an honor to be allowed to, to work out there. Ever since I can remember, I've always had an interest in the past in some way, shape, or form. And my particular interest is the archaeology, the archaeological record of the earliest people in the Americas, but also the geologic context. And we had already been doing some work right in the area that, that turned out to be this archaeological site. And so when the tracks were discovered, that was some of the first evidence of the age and context of these tracks. Yeah, Vance, I think the tracks are... Probably in this area here. Yeah, I think you're right. The stratigraphy is almost identical. The tracks were found in stream deposits. This, this area, most of the area was in a lake, but on the, on the east side of the basin, there were freshwater streams coming in off the mountains. Every time the stream would flood, it would bury some tracks, and then the people would come back later and make some more tracks, and then there would be another flood cycle. So a couple of, there were a couple of ways of approaching this. One was to document the tracks that were already exposed, mapping them in, in considerable detail, excavating them. What you tend to see is a discoloration because the, the sediment filling the track will, will often be a slightly different color. Seeing the footprints it was the most amazing thing I think I have ever seen in my life. Putting together the idea that people had been there six to 8,000 years earlier than had been documented previously. And this isn't just a stray tool, a broken piece of rock, something that might be questionable. This is actual people's footprints and footprints from mammoths, giant ground sloths, saber-toothed cats, dire wolves. Human beings were there when all of these humongous animals were walking this landscape. My moment of connection was when I was able to put my bare foot next to one of the footprints. And with permission then, I put my foot on the footprint itself which fit pretty well, so about a woman's size eight shoe or a 39 or 38 in European size. An interesting thing about this in, in my experience in archaeology is that what you're dealing with are, are literally moments in time. If you think about how long it takes to make a trackway, say, across my office, a couple of seconds. So you, you can you look at these tracks and you know, you, you're looking at where somebody literally just walked across the landscape 23,000 years ago in the space of a couple of seconds. And it's, it's, it's quite remarkable when, when we first saw those. The, the peopling of the Americas is the last great migration in human history. The dating we have right now suggests that these footprints span time from about 23,000 years ago to about 21,000 years ago. And that's 10,000 years older 
than the oldest well-documented occupation, human occupation of North America, the, the Clovis people, named after a, a site, well-known site near Clovis, New Mexico. So it, it's, it's a huge leap in many ways, a leap in time, a leap of imagination, that we have people living in the Americas 10,000 years earlier than Clovis. It causes archaeologists to stop and think about what has been the primary paradigm, the idea that Clovis were the first people here in North America. As both an American Indian and an archaeologist, what I've been doing over most of my career has been acting as a liaison between the two schools and really trying to bring more American Indian issues, concerns, and voices into the practice of archaeology and to the interpretation of the archaeological record. Whether or not this will impact American Indian ideas about their history on the continent, it remains to be seen. Scientifically, this is further proof that the time depth, uh, the deep time of American Indian occupation of North America is there. This area where the footprints, where the tracks were found, the discovery was made due to wind erosion. So between the time they're first exposed until they're pretty much gone, it's just a few years. So this is, a, this is a whole nother issue out there is how to preserve them, how to interpret them. We know that there are more discoveries to be found. Every time we look, we find something new. I went into archaeology to try to understand about people, to try to understand about who they were, about where they came from, and looking at these footprints wander off into the distance took me to that place in a way that no other discovery has ever made. White Sands has given me the opportunity to begin to look really deeply into origins of, of Native Americans and Native American histories. The idea that we've added another 8,000 years to that deep history, it, it's, it, it makes me smile and think about it. This is going to be one of those stories that people will be continuing to discuss Hopefully, my name, the names of my fellow researchers, all of us involved in White Sands, will continue to be a part of the footnote of history.